Hey there, everybody. Welcome to another Chem Complete episode. And in today's lecture, we're going to continue aldehydes and ketones in order to take a look at a specialized type of amine reaction called the Wolf Kishner reduction. So we'll take a look at the mechanism and the synthetics behind that coming up on the channel right now. Okay, so the Wolf Kishner reaction is going to be a type of imine reaction that's going to use a specialized amine reagent that we call hydrazine. So you're still going to be utilizing an aldehyde or a ketone when you're working with this. So we can just draw a generalized structure for an aldehyde or a ketone here. And the hydrazine reagent is essentially going to be two. NH2 groups. So it's going to be NH2, NH2. And then the additional reactant that you'll need with this is some form of base. So you're usually going to need a hydroxide, which is most common. Okay, we'll use potassium hydroxide, which is usually what you're going to see occurring most often in uh, literature examples and things of that nature. And so what's going to result from this is that you will have a complete reduction of this carbonyl all the way down to the alkane level so it's not going to make an alcohol in the reduction but it's actually going to completely remove the carbonyl functionality and get rid of that oxygen in the process okay so we can take a look at the mechanism here by the way if you're struggling with organic chemistry mechanisms things of that nature head on over to chemcomplete.com because we have a lot of free resources over there that can help you and on top of that we also if you want to support the channel we have some of the upper level guides that you can pay for so it's a good resource to check out at chemcomplete.com okay so the mechanism for this the first step i'm going to kind of um, summarize because again it's an imine reaction and if you want more details on an imine reaction what i would do is i would encourage you to go to the uh, lecture on imine which was about two lectures ago in this series and you can find some information there on how this first step would actually be occurring okay so what we will end up with with the exposure to the hydrazine the first step is going to go through the entire imine process and what we would end up with is going to be the resulting imine which would be a double bond to the nitrogen and then that would have the NH2 group that is still coming off of it right here okay so that's going to be the first step so from here we can then move forward and show you the actual Wolf Kishner part of the reaction that's going to be occurring okay so now we're going to need access to that hydroxide from the potassium hydroxide that we mentioned earlier and this hydroxide ion is going to act as a base it's going to pick up one of these hydrogens okay so if we wanted to show this mechanistically we could show one of the hydrogens okay so i'm kind of scratching that out and just putting this hydrogen here instead let's go ahead and actually erase it just whoops so it doesn't confuse people okay so this is what we would be looking at here okay that's better all right so this base is going to come and remove one of these hydrogens and these electrons will go to the nitrogen so you're actually going to form a negative charge on this nitrogen for the next upcoming step so we move along here and we're going to get the anion okay and the anion is going to be in resonance with the carbon and that's going to be important when we come and we take a look at how this reaction is going to proceed okay so we now have the NH that's left here. You've got two lone pairs that are on here, and you've got a negative charge associated with that nitrogen, right? And we don't want to forget the R on the other side. I should also mention, I'm being sloppy here, this is an equilibrium. Okay, so make sure you've got your arrows. I'll try to draw the equilibrium arrows uh, for the rest of this here. But when you start looking at this, okay, this is in resonance with the carbon which is going to be important because this can form a double bond with the nitrogen and then that can send the electrons from this pi bond down to the carbon and so the alternate resonance form that we can get here okay now this is not equilibrium this is just a resonance arrow is that we can create basically the carbon ion form of this where there's going to be the lone pair on the carbon right and then that carbon will end up having 
the double bonded nitrogen uh, with it. Okay. Now, just as a side point, what this is starting to lead to or is going to eventually form is it's going to create uh, nitrogen gas. And this is very prevalent in a lot of organic reactions because nitrogen gas is so stable and it forms so readily that it is very easy to get um, basically groups to undergo or shift or rearrange if it means the release of nitrogen gas can occur in that given reaction. Okay, so there's a negative charge associated with this carbanion. And now, because we had hydroxide, it is technically aqueous. And that means we do have water present as well that we can work with. Okay, so we can draw water over here. And the lone pair from the carbon can come in to grab the water. And this can go right here. So we're generating the hydroxide again, and we're going to put a hydrogen, okay, or start reducing that carbon down to the next form that we need. Okay, so from there, starting our equilibrium arrows now, we're going to have the R, that'll have the C, now this has an H on it, right, so we're on our way to that alkane type of product, and we now have the nitrogen double bonded nitrogen with this hydrogen up here and we've just regenerated hydroxide down in this step so we can have the hydroxide come back in and at this point we can grab that other hydrogen associated with this here right so i can grab this these electrons can go to make that nitrogen gas that i was talking about a minute ago and then we can basically get ready to wrap up uh, the rest of the reduction Okay, so in order to do that, that also means that this set of electrons here are going to go to the carbon because that's the only way I can break off or release the nitrogen gas, right, when I'm doing that. So if that occurs, then what that is going to lead to, uh, let's move it down this way. Okay. There's so many steps, this mechanism is kind of all over the place here. But once this occurs, what we're going to end up with is R right, C, R, H, and this is again a carbon ion at this point, right, because it got those electrons right there from the carbon-nitrogen bond as the nitrogen gas was released. So the final step is one more water interaction because we will generate the hydroxide yet again, making it basically a catalyst because it keeps coming back to us, right? So we've got water, and we can finish this reaction here. Carbon ion is very basic compared to water, so it will easily come in, grab this last hydrogen that's needed, regenerate the hydroxide, and then the final result of this, okay, and at this point we're not really reversible anymore, right? We're just moving forward, um, is that we are going to end up with R, CH2, R. So this is a way of taking, because we started out with, the carbonyl group, and turning that group into, right, a alkane. So that is the mechanism for the Wolf-Kishner. Wolf-Kishner is very useful in terms of undergoing a reduction process where you want to completely eliminate the oxygen or the carbonyl group, whereas a lot of the other reductions that we've seen for aldehydes and ketones will turn that group into an alcohol, right? So you could almost view this as a stronger or a more powerful reduction in comparison to those with the alcohols. Hey, so that's it. That really covers everything. So like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. We actually just hit 15,000 subscribers the other day. So I really appreciate all the support that's been coming into the channel. And again, I'm going to throw out one more shout out to chemcomplete.com. Right, so I've got it pulled up here. Here's chemcomplete.com. If you click on the free resources tab and you sign up, you will be granted access to a bunch of different free resources that could potentially help you as you're trying to navigate your way through your chemistry courses this year. And then if you come over here and you click on buy guides, this is a perfect way that you can support the channel. We have very affordable guides, how to pass and prepare for organic chemistry, gas chromatography, aromaticity practice, uh, SN1, SN2 guides, and the most popular one, the Solving Unknown Organic Structures Guide, because most people have issues with spectroscopy when they're first learning it. So head on over to ChemComplete to show us some additional support, if you would, and I will see you guys for the next lecture where we are going to start 
acetyl and ketyl reactions. I'll see you guys then. Thanks for joining me.